Hi, I'm Teresa Duncan. And I'm Kevin Henry. Welcome to Chew On This. We are excited to bring you our views of current topics in the dental industry and put a little different spin on them, giving you something to chew on. If you need to jump off, be sure to check the show notes for links as well as how to get in touch with us. And now let's give you something to chew on. And we are back with another edition of Chew on This. K Dog, what's up? Teresa, another beautiful day talking to you. Let's solve the world's problems once again. Well, I will tell you, I have done some reading. I did some research. In fact, when you logged on, I was actually doing some journalistic duties. I was like, hold on, Kevin, I can't talk right now because I am researching this guy named Jelly Roll. Now, have you heard of Jelly Roll? Oh, we are big country music fans in this house. So Jelly yes. Roll is absolutely part of the the playlist. No doubt about it. So imagine my delight, because we are too. Imagine my delight when the term Jelly Roll crossed over on my dental search terms. And it was nothing to do with cavities, like like inducing cavities, like too much sweetness and donuts and right. all that kind of thing. And uh, it was about our friend Jelly Roll who is getting a whole reconstructive, like he was, should be done by now. He underwent a complete mouth reconstruction. He had had lots and lots of issues. Let me go to the People Magazine article. Um, And this was taken from, and I'm going to link everything on there, but apparently Jelly Roll's wife, Bunny XO, which I did not know that was his wife's name. So shout out to Bunny XO. Absolutely. So she uh, did the whole you know, documenting of it on TikTok and, and I don't have the sweet TikTok. So somebody else is going to have to look at it, but uh, people magazine was good enough to, to do that. So apparently he's 39, which I think I was kind of surprised by that. I thought, I thought he was younger. I don't, I don't know why he does look kind of older, but I always just thought that was his beard and stuff. I don't know. Was that surprising to you? You know, he's been through some rough stuff. I mean, I know, uh, you know, his story is very interesting. So yeah, 39, uh, yeah, it was a little bit of a yeah. surprise too, honestly. One of the um one of my favorite podcasts I should link that too is when he was on Theo Vaughn's podcast and oh, he yeah. told a lot about his life growing up and stuff. So he's just a he's a great guy. So he's thirty nine. He got veneer replacements, and I want to here share the screen because our software can do that, Kevin. How cool Let's is that? It. So I'm gonna share the screen here and I'm gonna show you this guy put together a compilation of Jelly Roll's teeth, which I thought was very funny. So um, <clears throat> there you go. That's that's it looked like. And then he he there's another picture of him there. And so he basically had a whole lot of veneers and some gold and all that kind of stuff. So let me go back here. I will stop sharing and then we can get back to talking. So he said he is getting rid of the veneers. OK, getting rid of his wisdom teeth. And he's actually uh, getting a lot of cavities done, having some implants and all of that. So he's getting a lot done. Um, here's what's funny. And I I know this is wrong to laugh, but he's clearly uh, sedated. <laughs> he's clearly in a one of those um, states where people just laugh at you when you talk. So uh, he's he's doing that. Um, has anybody ever seen you in such a state, Kevin, where you're just like nitrous happy? Yeah, yeah, I did uh, have the whole uh, wisdom teeth taken out, and you know my ex-wife, and probably one of the reasons why she's my ex-wife now. You know, so hey, it's that, it's that easy. So yeah, <laughs> she recorded it and, <laughs> exactly. and and turned up in court with the documentation. <laughs> yeah, that was that. Oh so. goodness. Okay, so Mister uh, Mister Roll here. Although I know he, that's not his name. Uh, he's had the same veneers for twenty years. Uh, finally, getting them replaced. This is a quote, and I'm getting some implants and getting some cavities and wisdom teeth pulled out. I'm doing a lot of Mm-mm. Uh, I'm getting complete. I'm getting completely mouth reconstructive surgery, kinda, and I think that must have been when the sedative um, <laughs> kicked in because that grammat that's a grammatical mess right there. <laughs> the editor um, in the tr- kind of shrugs a little bit, but yeah, yeah. So, and then uh, the dentist asked him how he was feeling, and and what do you think he said, Kevin? Fine as jelly. I don't. You tell me. He said he's feeling sexy. Sexy. I like it. I like <laughs> so he it. also said, uh, I want a pretty smile. I had an ugly smile when I was a kid. People picked on me and made fun of me and stuff. Um, and that that actually makes me uh, very 
very sad. So apparently at the um, at the CMT, the Country Music Awards, um, a dentist had made a comment about how he was biting his fingers. And then I guess they he, he that made him start thinking about it. So uh, he has apparently dedicated his life to good oral health, Kevin. I think we should applaud uh, Jelly Roll for that. And uh, that got me thinking. I hope that the teeth that were put back in or the teeth that they, that they worked on, I hope it doesn't affect the way he speaks and everything, because you know how that can happen when you get new dental work yeah. done. Yep. So hopefully yeah, that, that mean, smooth well, voice keeps going. I, I'm thinking the same thing, the speaking, the seeing, all of that. You know, I, I mm -hmm. would think that they may be prepared for that or maybe thought about that hopefully before all this. But, but it's a good reminder that, you know, so many times that is a, a target of bullying, is a smile, yeah. is teeth that aren't perfect. And, and I know a lot of kids go through crud like that and don't often have the means to fix it later in life. Yeah. I mean, if you look at, at, at this whole cosmetic industry is huge. I mean, our last episode, we talked about mewing. We talked mewing. about the looks maxing with the shaving of the jawbone. I mean, people go to great lengths. So actually replacing busted up veneers is cheap compared to going through that kind of surgery. But, you know, the, the <laughs> video that you showed just for a minute there about all the different views of the teeth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's something that I guess I didn't even really notice until I saw those pictures. And then all of a sudden I was like, oh, okay, well, I can see why he'd want to change things up. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it hadn't really jumped out to me until you showed those for sure. Yeah, I didn't either. And I, but I still think it's weird that somebody put together a compilation of his smiles. Yeah. I, I find I that, right? I don't need that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, you speak a lot and, and there may be people out there who are documenting you in various stages and, you know, maybe there's no. a tree stump. There might no. be. No, don't say that. That's really disturbing. <laughs> That's disturbing. I'm going to I'm going to disappear after a, a an event and and I'm going to say Kevin, I'm going to be sitting there in a trunk going damn it Kevin. <laughs> you cursed me. <laughs> there well, better not be any stalkers. On here, you'll know why I'm I'm the only one chewing on this now. Yes. Yeah, oh, great. It, okay. It, this it, uh, it, you it, just it. want the show solo. Suddenly it makes sense. Hmm. I'm telling you, though, listeners, I don't know if you know this, but Kevin is quite the darling among his dental assistant brethren. I think you have a following. Well, maybe, you know, they may be documenting my smile, which is very possible. I may get, I may have a YouTube video out there. It's possible. I'm going to check. Listen, after. Yeah. I, I think I might be able to fight off one stalker, but I don't think I can fight off like five assistants going after their favorite speaker. I don't think I can do that. I, I don't I even know if could. Dana and I could do that. I don't know. Oh, I, I've seen, I've seen you. I've seen <laughs> you. You, you, you're spunky. Don't, don't, don't you let anything <laughs> tell you otherwise. You're spunky, kid. <laughs> You've got chutzpah. Is it chutzpah or is it chutzpah? It's chutzpah. No, I said chutzpah. Is it? It's <laughs> So back in the day, before you met your lovely bride, you were lecturing everywhere. Do you remember your GQ face? He had this black and white profile face, and you were like looking off into the sunset, and all the assistants yeah. were like, "Ooh!" So, so you know that was that was a, an interesting time because the publisher said, "Don't give me a regular headshot," so we went with that one. And then there was also that was the same year that RDH under one roof. They said, "Here, you're in charge of the drink tickets." So oh. I had all the hijinks converging on me to get the drink tickets. It was a it was a beautiful time. Yeah, a little like some thirsty hygienists, huh? There was some thirsty hygienists. <laughs> yeah, Dana, that was so long ago. I don't even remember it. There, really long ago. There you yeah, go. yeah, yeah. So, so long ago. Hopefully, by now, our wonderful editor has popped up that GQ. It's what's known as the <laughs> GQ picture of Kevin. If you say GQ picture, he knows exactly what you're talking you know. about. So, <laughs> I'm just saying, stalkers are coming for you before they're coming for me. You should know that. Well, just, just notice there's a lot of different hair color back then. That's for sure. There's no that. Both of us, you know, honey, it's okay. We pop up that video of me, you, and Rita Zamora in Honolulu. Oh, my God. That is we on YouTube. Babies. That's, that's the one we should be putting up here if you want to stalk. 
There you we go. We were babies. And I think Rita actually might get angry if we put that up there because I don't think she likes well, the old Rita. But yeah, who cares? We won't tell her. So <laughs> Rita, don't. if anybody knows Rita, don't say anything to her. So, all right. So back to Mr. Roll. So he's going to, I'm going to look for his final product. I'm sure it's already up on TikTok or maybe it's in the getting fixed now, maybe getting fabricated or whatever. <laughs> actually, it's probably ongoing because they were saying implants. They were saying the wisdom teeth extraction. That's going to have some time to heal. Oh, that guy's going to be a mess after that, the wisdom teeth extraction. So do you stop seeing for a little bit? I mean, obviously, maybe you're not touring right now, so you're just kind of laying low at this point and just getting oh, through all yeah. this. Oh, yeah. Wisdom teeth yeah. extraction. Absolutely. You've got those sockets back there. I mean, you're going to want to rest. The swelling's probably going to have. He's probably got some swelling, I'm sure. The thing is, he's 39, right? So those wisdom teeth have been in there a long time. They're, they're settled. Um, yeah. So that also makes me think that he's probably going to have to have some um, ortho work or some movement done also because if he's had those wisdom teeth friend for all those times and they have been pushing then to do the other work that they want to do he probably needs to get some alignment done um or at least you know fixing fixing the bite you know what i mean no i'm thinking that you know like you said it's complete complete mouth reconstruction i'm sure it was like a domino effect once you start on one you had to do the whole thing it would not surprise me at all so with all this money he's spending, all this work that he's doing, I'm hoping that it lasts, that this is his last huge go round. And I'm hoping the smile is gorgeous because then he can be like, hey, you should go to the dentist. You should do this. Maybe he becomes like an advocate, right? So I'm thinking you're right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. Ke Kevin Bacon is a big advocate of flossing. We know that. So we need more mm -hmm. advocates of look what the smile has done. Look what the, you know, the surgery did. All these things. We need that in dentistry. Well. Let's hope that his work lasts. So you were telling me, though, that you've come across some studies about implants, right? And we know he's going to have an implant. So what's Absolutely. Mr. Roll in for? Well, it depends. Does Mr. Roll take penicillin? That's one oh. question that we need to ask. That's kind Which of a personal question, down. isn't it? Kind well, of a personal you know, question. I mean, but well, <laughs> is it on the health history form? Maybe you know that answer, but that's what the, we need to be finding out because <laughs> there is a study that was out that was presented at the IADR, you know, the big dental research meeting that just mm -hmm. happened. And it said that there are really two things that could show that an implant may be ripe to fail. And oh. that is if the, if the person uh, takes penicillin and if the, if the implant is measures less than 10 millimeters. You know, Teresa, I'm sure you remember back in the day, there was a wave of mini dental implants way back mm -hmm. in the day. Do you remember mm -hmm. those? Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's funny. I, I haven't heard that much about them. I'm sure they still exist. I'm sure they're yeah. still out there. But 10 I millimeters is a long one, though. That's a long one. So that's a lot of it. That's a lot of implants. Not all implants yep. go to the 10 millimeter mark. <laughs> Well, so, so here's the interesting thing is that I think we we hear so often about implant failure and it's like that whole worst case scenario thing. Mm -hmm. And yet in this study, and we'll, again, we'll link to it. We covered it on drbycuspid.com. Uh, they did a four-year uh, swash of, of implant study. 2,000 mm -hmm. implants were placed. Guess how many out of those, what percentage out of those you think failed out of the 2,000? Five. Three. Three. Okay. That's 3%. good. That, that well, is good. I don't know. Maybe other people think it's bad. I think it's all right. That's well, not bad. But in, I will say as, a, as, a, as an editor, I had always kind of in my head thought it was higher because we hear so much about implant failure. Mm, okay. And so I see what you I mean. saw this, yeah, I was like, okay, maybe it's not the warning bells that we think about. Mm-hmm. But mm -hmm. but they said that penicillin allergy and its effect on the implant was one of the biggest ones, which gets me to beating the drum as I always do, because you mentioned my dental assistants earlier, mm -hmm. and I always talk about the importance of that health history form and really yeah. finding out the, the stuff about the patient instead of it just being no changes, nothing new, and kind of shrugging your shoulders and moving on. So uh, the implant failure thing, I remember when I used to work with the ICOI and taught for the um, auxiliary section of the ICOI. 
And there was a lot of foreign dentists coming over from South America, from Asia, right? So very, very, it's the International Association. So they would debate this all the time because in the States, it was like, you cannot smoke, you cannot drink, you can't do that. You have to have an ideal, you know, implant site. And I remember one South American dentist, he was from Brazil, actually, was like, Mm -hmm. if we waited for the ideal thing, we would never place an implant. Everybody smokes and drinks here. Like, what are you talking about? Like, he just Mm -hmm. was like, you guys are ridiculous, right? (laughs) Yeah. So, and the same thing with the Asians, you know, the Asians said they smoke a lot over in Asia. And so this whole thing of implant failure, like, it was really can't one doctor was explaining in a crowd, he was saying, this is, you know, you guys hype this up and all that. You're going to have crowns that fail. You're going to have fillings that fail. You can't tank an implant brand with this failure rate. That's really similar to other failure rates. And I thought that was really interesting. So, but, at that time too, Kevin, they did not have long-term study. Now they do. Now they have 20 plus yeah. years of studies. Back then, the studies were really only in surgical settings with those. Do you remember the blade implants? The oh, big, absolutely. Did you ever yeah. see those? The big, long blade implants. So they had like a lot of those. Um, so it's good to see that the studies are flowing and coming out. I hadn't heard that about the penicillin allergy. That's interesting. Yeah, I thought so too. And, you know, again, it's something I think that we just need to make sure in the dental practice, we're asking the right questions. We have all this. Mm -hmm. And then I think that that brings up then a conversation of if you have a patient who might be a candidate for implants, but has a penicillin allergy, Mm -hmm. there may be a lot more patient education that needs to happen right there. And so I think that's just something that you've got to be aware of in the practice. Hmm. Yeah, I'm curious to read about that because I wonder why that kind of allergy, like what does it do in, in the bone that would make it reject or make it not, yeah. you know, integrate as much or osseo integrate as well. And so I read this, we just returned from a trip to Arizona. Uh, my mother-in-law lives there, saw her mm-hmm. for a few days, and but she had an implant fail recently. And oh, no. I wish I had seen this before I saw her because I would have said, are you allergic to penicillin? Because I would have been very curious to see. So not to I don't not too late to that. send that highly personal text. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mama, just checking. <laughs> Weird question. <laughs> you know. I tell you what. Sometimes those medical history forums, you just never. It was rolling the dice. You never knew what you were going to see, and it was always like I was always surprised. Like some of the stuff people would admit to. Um, and I'm not talking about like, obviously diseases and stuff, but like, like liver disease or anything like that. Like people would say, like one person said previously had lice, like, how is that? Like, why do you tell me that? And, and are you sure it was previously like, (laughs) like those are the head covers you definitely change on the chair. I'm just telling (laughs) you, you have to. (laughs) Right. And I remember one lady, she wrote down, do you want to know my STDs? Because that's when it was STDs. Back oh. then. Do you want to know my STDs? And I was like, well, yeah, we kind of do. And she was like, wow. all right. She wrote, she wrote it down. I'm just like, look, and she's still writing. I was like, damn. So- <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm but- fascinated that people will actually admit this because I, my thought has always been patients are going to be like, I don't even want to tell them I smoke weed, let alone any of that. Oh, so no, I really she, am, she yeah. was letting it fly. In fact, she made the comment to me, hasn't everyone, I still will never forget this. My best friend Raina and I laugh about this all the time. Hasn't everyone had chlamydia? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. What, do you commiserate? Like, do you, this, cause they always teach you in communication to empathize and mirror the patient, oh, right? Yeah. Yes, everybody has had chlamydia. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a Reddit group we spend a lot of time on, you know, so absolutely. What the hell? Oh, okay. Well, thank you for letting us know. Wow. Okay. Good job. Okay. I mean, and hey, like, you know, maybe that's a sign of a life that's been lived. Who knows? I don't well, know. Well, you know what? Hey, each is a, his or her own in this case. <laughs> Who am I to judge? Can you pay your bill? Get on back there. Let's there, go. There you go. See? You're alive, credit. Chef's kiss. It's fine. That's so right. let's go. Bring, honey, you bring in whatever you want back there. We got Lysol and Cav aside. You just slap that credit card down and we're good to go. I don't care. Just don't touch the doctor in that way. Just don't. No, no. Don't, don't give the googly eyes. No, no. So. Don't do that. <laughs> you need to start asking your dental assistants, Kevin, what is the most awkward conversation you've ever had with a patient? Oh, What's the weirdest be- thing on the social history or the medical history you've ever seen? You know and what? Then if I you're really that. brave, Kevin, ask them what was the creepiest patient they ever had. Ooh. 
there's your whole class right there. You need to teach a three-hour yeah, class? Those three questions. We may have to go all day. I mean, I may have to say, folks, we're doing afternoon as well. So we'll, we'll be back. Wow. And then an hour later, you feed that into your, your AI generator, and boom, you got a book. <laughs> <laughs> You've solved a lot of problems for me just in this podcast. I really appreciate that. I mean, you just, so you know, in 2026, the creepiest things ever in the dental practice. We will have the freaking auditorium <laughs> there at the GWCC. It'll be fantastic. Tell me you would not sign up to see that class. Oh, I'd, I'd I, teach that in a heartbeat. I absolutely, absolutely. would. I'd come yeah. in at 10. I'd be in the audience going, ooh, tell no, me no, another no, story. No, no, no. <laughs> no, there's no pending. You're, you know, we used to do the trends course. I think that's oh, what we yeah. pivot to. I think we oh, pivot I, to I creepy trends. I have a lot of stories. I have a See? lot of stories. Unfortunately, a lot of them are mine. <laughs> but I could probably this start collecting person, them now. You know? Huh? What? <laughs> you could just What'd say, you say this one person, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know. One time in band camp, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's. I'm telling you what, men, men and uh, women who are single say some really strange things when they find out you are also single, right, in the chair. So hygienists who around the country understand what I'm saying <laughs> because they're there, they're captive. Oh, are you single? Yeah. <laughs> this this has unlocked a new dental fear for many of our listeners right here. <laughs> Just to tell you, also they're like, oh boy. I wish they'd know because honestly, you hit on somebody in a dental office, the second that door closes behind you, you're not even on the elevator and we're already talking. I mean, come okay. on. <laughs> so, see, so may we need to make sure that this podcast goes out to the single folks out there. <laughs> to all the single we're, folks out there. <laughs> Dating advice to the dental practice. Well, number one, don't. There you go. <laughs> oh, I have lots of stories about that. So. <laughs> And those yeah, aren't from yeah, me, actually. Those so. are from wayward hygienists who used to work in my office. Wayward hygienists. <laughs> <I'd have to. laughs> I'm telling you, the one. book idea, creepy dental stories, just creepy, creepy dental stories. There you go. Just take off the rest of 2024. There's your income stream. <laughs> okay. What do you think about this book title? Wayward hygienists and the tales they tell. There you <laughs> go. And their tales. How about that? Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> You're like, you're like, I'm not commenting on that, Duncan. I'm not no, I'm not. <laughs> that. Noop, noop, noop. <laughs> Wayward hygienist. Yeah. Wayward yeah. hygienist, huh? I mean, I, I you said it. I think that's fantastic. Oh, the Wayward you know Hygienist what? podcast. Maybe yeah. we just, you know. We got to call up our friend Andrew and see if he'll uh, get behind a, a podcast like that. <sighs> He's wayward. <laughs> we're talking about our good friend over at a tale of two hygienist andrew johnston uh who is on another podcast that we just can't plug right now because we technically he's the competition but we love him <laughs> we do love him even though we do. yes yeah put him <sighs> on. So, all right i think we have uh We've rolled wow. Mr. Jelly Roll. We've gone we've gone all over the place. We've gone into the country music world. We've gone into the research world. And then we've gone yes. into the gutter. So we are just accomplished today. We we are. But you know one thing we didn't do, and I and now I'm keeping track of all this in my head. Uh -oh. we, we didn't we we stayed in the States the whole time. We did. We actually did this time. But your research thing is an international research thing. That's true. Like maybe the researchers are from Sao Paulo or somewhere. Who knows? Yeah. You know? Oh, you did mention Brazil earlier. So I did. But you know what? You're right. We did actually, we did stay in the States. And you know what? As we should, because America. Right? America. America. <laughs> <laughs> Say that while you're mewing. America. Okay. <laughs> I can't. Oh, Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, Kevin and I have just gotten really punchy today at the end of the day. So we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. Any last thoughts, my my mewing friend? No, I've been researching if wayward hygienist URL is available. So, no, it's all good here. So we're fine. Another income stream. There we go. So. <laughs> All right, dear listeners, thank you so much for hanging in there with us. Until next time, later. And that's a wrap for this episode of Chew on This. We hope you laughed and learned a little. Check out the show notes for any links we mentioned. And don't forget to give us a rating on your podcast app. 
Feel free to drop us a comment on social media or by email if you have any suggestions for future topics. We'll be back in about two weeks. See you then.